First Samuel chapter 19 And Saul spake to Jonathan his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. Well, he's gotten angry now, he's gotten bitter, he's gotten envy. And Proverbs speaks about anger and all that. It can be controlled, but envy, who can stand before it? Bitterness and envy is a sin that you need to get rid of. Because now he's seeking to kill, murder. But Jonathan, thank you for Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted, that's the first time that word shows up, much in David, and we already read, he loved David as his own soul, as a love of, you know, past the women. So this is not going to go well with Jonathan, what Saul just said. This is the worst person to tell. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh, the first time that shows up, to kill thee. Now therefore I pray thee, take heed to thyself unto the morning. Second Advent, morning, end of the church age. And abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. John is like, you got to get out of here for a moment. you got to leave. My father wants to kill you. And the first thing Jonathan right now is hide David. Hide him. Uh, the spies that went into Rahab's house were hidden. The spy, uh, the men that went out to David during the, uh, the battle there of uh, Absalom, they were hidden in the well. Sometimes it's not bad to hide. And I will go out, this is Jonathan, I will go out and stand beside my father in the field, feels the type of the world, where thou art. So we're going to hide you somewhere in the field, and I'm going to bring my father to near where you are, but he's not going to know it. And we're going to carry a conversation that you're going to be able to handle and hear and Jonathan does this again later on he does it with his armor bearer he says David if I shoot the arrows this way this is what's going on if I shoot the arrows this way this is what's going on and Jonathan will carry on a conversation with his armor bearer with David listening but the armor bearer has no idea what's ha what's happening where thou art and I will commune with my father of thee I'm going to talk about you and what I see that I will tell thee. So Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father. To Saul, David's an enemy. He hates David. He wants David killed. He already had his daughter, Michael, stand up. No, that's coming up. That will come up. Never mind. Well, here is Jonathan's son. I jumped ahead. Son of Saul, and he's standing up for a man that he hates. And he knows David's going to get the kingdom and not Jonathan. So Samuel already told him that. And we'll read later on that Saul will admit that to Jonathan himself. So he's going to walk up to his dad and say, Hey, Dad, David's a wonderful, great guy. Urgh. And said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant. Now look at this. Saul is completely in the wrong. And Jonathan is under Saul, as Saul is a king, and is also under Saul that Saul is his father. And with respect, he says the king. He gives him the title. Oh, I don't like the president of the United States, so I'm just going to call him. No. If he's a king, he deserves the title king. If he's a president, he desires he, he's he's awarded with the title of president. If you like it or not, because the Bible will tell us that God's the one that puts the people in authority. You don't like that police over that police officer that pulled you over. So what? God gave him that uniform. He deserves that uniform because he went through the classes, he went through uh, the training in the academy to put that uniform on. So Jonathan knows his father's wrong, but still calls him king. 
And he says, let not the king sin against his servant. Murder is a sin. And dad, if you do this crime, there is no penalty for murder. You're going to die and go straight to hell, which he's going to do anyway. So look at look at what Jonathan does. You should not mention people's sin. You're going to sin, Dad. When I witnessed my dad the first time, I told my dad, plain and simple as I know, Dad, you're going to hell. Held nothing back against me. And because his yeah, because his works have been to the word, very good. Dad, what you're going to do is you're I'm talking about Jonathan to Saul, King. You're going to commit a sin. And the nation's going to know about it. You're going to commit murder. And there's, there's a problem with this. David does not deserve to die. Now, Paul says, he writes, he says, listen, if I am subject to the death penalty, I refuse not to die. So you got an innocent man here. And Jonathan is doing right to his father, the king, saying, hey, you got to stop this. You're going to stop this. The nation's going to be against you. God's, well, God's already against you. We don't know how much Jonathan knows about his dad going into the priesthood and Samuel telling him. We don't know what Jonathan knows. But he's very good. So David has a good report. As a preacher, minister should, according to Paul writing to Timothy, a good report. Jesus Christ had a good report. And how many times did they want him dead? And what did Jesus ever do to deserve to die? Absolutely nothing. They planned to kill him, eliminate him. They picked up stones one time. And then they got the government to crucify him. And Jesus Christ was good. And sinless. For he did put his life, David's life, in his hand. And slew the Philistines. Now, there's more to what you're reading here than what is to be read. David not only slew Goliath, remember that battle day? He wasn't even a soldier. That young man walked up to the battle and said, I will take care of this battle. I will get victory in God. I'm not a soldier. He didn't have to do that. There were thousands and thousands of Israelites who should have done what David did. He stood up to that Goliath. But then again, Jonathan sparked another uh, nerve in Saul because remember when they came back to the battle, the women are praising David and not Saul. Uh, envy. Pride. David's done nothing. The Philistine. No, it's the Philistine. You would find the wicked one. The wicked. When you're talking about the Antichrist and the devil. That Philistine is a type of Antichrist. And the Lord wrought, that means to do something, a great salvation for all Israel. God saved them of the hand of the Philistines that day by David. They were not subject to the Philistines. My salvation is I am not subject to death and hell and Satan no longer. I have been saved from death and hell and Satan. By God through Jesus Christ. Thou saw it. You witnessed it. You saw the whole thing. And this rejoice. When that giant hit the ground, kabunk, and all Israel stood up and started fighting, you sat there, hallelujah, praise God. Let's go. Rejoice. Wherefore then wilt thou sin against innocent blood? David's innocent. And if you kill him, you're a murderer. Now you want to see where David is a type of Jesus Christ? Let's not miss this one. Matthew 27, 4. Let's not miss this one. Innocent blood. Matthew 27. Jonathan leaves out one word. But he didn't, he doesn't know. But look at the type of Jesus Christ. And we'll start in verse 3. Matthew 27, 3. Don't miss this one. This is David, the type of Jesus Christ. 
a man after God's own heart, as Jesus Christ was God's heart. Matthew 27, verse 3, Then Judas, we know Judas, which had betrayed him, Jesus, isn't that what Saul's doing right now? He's betraying David. When he saw that he was condemned, Jesus, Jesus had been turned over to the government. Judas is in trouble. Repented himself. And brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest. And look, look at repentance. He went to a priest. He ain't going to get saved going to a priest. Judas went to a priest. And when I grew up, there was a rock band called Judas Priest. And that's an interesting story if you ever want to check out how they got their name and all that. But. Saying, I have sinned. See that word sin? That's what Jonathan said. In that I have betrayed, here we go, and I'm lying this, the innocent blood. That is what Jonathan said, innocent blood, not the innocent blood. And the priest said, what is it to us? See thou to it. Christ crucified under the orders and uh, what's that? betrayal of Judas. And Judas says, that was the, the innocent blood. David over here, Jonathan says, against innocent blood. Well, it can't be the innocent blood because David sinned for all of sin, come toward the glory of God. I guarantee he's done some stuff in his childhood and he's done some stuff in his adulthood that, you know, he's not innocent. But when it comes to Saul's anger, he's innocent. To slay David without cause. There's no reason to do this, king, dad. And the people know it. And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan. What's wrong with him? The priests and the elders did not do what Saul did. They continued to bring Jesus to the cross of Calvary. At the moment here, Saul is, okay, fine. I mean, he's going to go back and try to kill David again. And Saul hearkened to the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swear. As the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. And God honors that vow because David's not slain. How does David die? He dies of ripe old age in his bed. <laughs> and before he dies, he's able to put Solomon in charge of the kingdom. And he just passes on and goes the way of the earth, death. You see that oath that Saul made? Now let me ask you a question. Is Saul saved? Old Testament sense. No. Do you realize how many men on battlefields throughout the world history? And I'll say this to church age because we're in the church age now. How many men during church history wars have, have made an oath to God? God, if you do this, I swear I... Well, I was unsaved. That doesn't count. Saul is unsaved. And he gets an evil spirit and he's going to prophesy in that evil spirit. And God held him to that oath. He kept David alive. Be careful what you owe. I'm telling you right now, if you if you told God you're in a battlefield that you will come home and you'll be that preacher that mom wanted you to be, oh, oh. going all the world and preach the gospel. You don't have to sit behind a pulpit. And Jonathan called David. And that's not today, you know, they pick up the cell phones. David! <laughs> And when Saul, like, you know, because they say within the earshot, David was there. You imagine he's finished with his father. All right, Jonathan and uh, Saul says, okay, my Lord, he's not going to be slain. And Jonathan turns around, David! Imagine Saul that you mean he's right here? You had my enemy right here this whole time? And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan showed him all the things. And Jonathan, look at me, Jonathan, 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 Jonathan. Brought David to Saul. Come here, David, and come see my dad. And he was in his presence, as in times past. Now, again, you got a temporary re restoration here. 
It's not going to last long, this one. And there was war again. And David went out and fought with the Philistines and slew them with a great slaughter. And they fled from him. Now, this is why David cannot build the temple. Though he's killing the enemies of God in the Old Testament, he is shedding blood. Now, God honors the shedding of blood during war, but when it comes to my temple, and then he's going to shed the blood of Uriah. Grace Lord, and they fled from him. So there were some Philistines still alive. Not a complete victory. All right, we won. Yay, battlegrounds. Yay, hooray. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul. Oh, come on. And he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand. I always, young, as a young Christian, reading through the Bible the first few times, I did. Why don't somebody just take that javelin? When Saul's sleeping one night, just take that javelin. And you read later on that Saul's going to be in the cave. He's going to be sleeping. David's going to go in there. And he rips his skirt, walks out and says, Saul, I'm sorry. And later on, they're in camp. God put a deep sleep upon him. And he takes his water and takes his, I think it's javelin there. I'm like, yeah, all right, David, lose that thing. Chuck that thing in a brook somewhere. And he gives it back to Saul. I'm like, well, you see how humble David is. And he's not relying on Saul. He's not relying on Jonathan. God's going to protect him, and he knows that. No matter what weapon is against him, David doesn't pick up armor. David doesn't pick up a weapon. He trusts in God. And David played with his hand, as he'd done the times before, with a harp or something. Music soothes a savage beast. And Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with a javelin. So see the hatred, the envy, the pride is still there. But he, David, slipped. That's the first, first time that shows up. I made a slip. And there's only one other place in the Bible, Psalm 73, verse 2. Only two places in the Bible, Psalm 73, verse 2. Slip. So what's the expression today? He gave him the slip. David gave Saul the slip. A way out of Saul's presence. And he smoked the javelin to the wall. And David fled and escaped that night. That's God. I don't think Saul would have missed an, a, a military person like he is. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house. And watched him. So he's got a troop. He's got people watching his house when David comes home. And to slay him in the morning. So let David go home. Let him go into his bedchamber. And then morning he's going to die. I think they tried that with Saul when he went over the wall in the basket. And Michael, David's wife, told him. Saying. If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. She's looking out the window. She sees those troops out there. She sees his, her father's uh, armed men, and she probably got information from the people that they're for her husband. Now, remember, the Bible told us that she loves David. And I'm looking where that is. Verse 20 of chapter 18. And Michael Saul's daughter loved David. She don't want him dead. She's protecting him. Now what is going to be the family issue now? Jonathan's already protecting David. Now his daughter Michael is protecting David. If that's not going to flume. I would not want to be at this family's table. I would put these children up against the wall so Saul can't get them in the back. And here's an interesting. And so Michael let David down through a window. Joshua 2.15. Let's check these references. Joshua 2.15. Yeah, the Bible is, you know, it's interesting because scripture was scripture. Joshua 2.15. 
Joshua 2.15. Going back to the spies that Joshua sent out into Jericho. Then she let them down by a cord through the window. This has happened before. Acts 9.25. X925. You know, we're going to go through a window kind of sort of by the way when we're raptured. You say, what are you talking about? When NASA launches those rockets down south where we are, don't they call them a launch window? Doesn't it say in the time of Noah's flood that the windows of heaven open up? So, I mean, so, Acts 9.25. Now, I don't know if this is a, a window, but Acts 9.25. Then disciples took him, Saul, to be Paul. Isn't that interesting? By night, isn't that interesting? And let him down by the wall in a basket. I would say with scriptures, I would say 50% chance that was a window. And here we are at night. I forgot, it's Joshua. I don't know if that was at night. The church age is at night. And before morning comes, the rapture is going to happen. Then the seven year tribulation period. And the Jews are going to be on the run like David with the Antichrist type of Saul chasing around. And according to what Jesus said, the Jews that will help, I mean, the people that will help the Jews, Michael helps David, the Jew. I'm not saying she's not one. She will be parted with the sheep. And sheep will go into the Millennium Kingdom. So Michael let David down through a window. And he went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and laid it in the bed. And put a pillow, that's the first time that shows up. Of goat's hair. So you want a biblical pillow, get a goat's hair pillow. For his bolster. That's the first time that word shows up. And that's a long pillow. I don't know how long, but it's longer than a regular pillow. And covered it with a cloth. She don't want anybody to see what this thing is. But it's not David. How long is that image? This is enough to make it look like it's a human. Maybe it had a face. Maybe it could have been David's face. Who knows? And when Saul sent messengers to take David, it's morning. She said, he is sick. Rahab said, there's no one here. They're gone. The woman at the well with the spies there, I, I don't know where they went. That's a lie. But God seems to honor a lie where it keeps a Jew alive. I don't know. There's never a rebuke. When a Jew's life is online in the Bible and someone lies to protect them. There is never a rebuke. Now, I'm not saying it's okay to lie, but I will curse them that curse you, and I will bless them that will bless the, you. She's trying to bless the Jew. Later on, she'll blow it. And Saul sent messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed. Now, look how cruel that guy is. David's sick in bed, not feeling well. I don't know if he got a temperature, if he's throwing up, got diarrhea, whatever it is. He's not well. You grab that bed and you bring that boy to me in his bed. Why? That I may slay him. I thought you were going to let him live. So you see a man repenting is not always repenting. It's always not correct repenting. Saul repents and never gets right and never does right. And when the messengers were come in, behold, there was an image in the bed with a pillow of goat's hair 
for his bolster. They pull back the sheets. Oh, where? That's not David. And Saul said unto Michael, Oh, my nose is going to me. Why hast thou deceived me so? Oh, now he's angry with his daughter. He's angry with his son. He's angry with his daughter. And sent away my enemy. You know who the enemy, you know who the enemy is of the Antichrist? Jews. And sent away my enemy that he is escaped. You know what Jews are going to do in the tribulation period? They're going to escape. Revelation 12. And Michael answered Saul, he said unto me, let me go, why should I kill thee? Uh, maybe why should I kill thee? Or let me go. But she's the one that came up with the idea. She's the one that told David, listen, my dad's going to kill you. You get out of here. Now she's standing before a, a furious, angry, no-nonsense man. And the power of the king is, if he said, okay, take off her neck. Ain't like a president with these kings. So David fled and escaped and came to Samuel to Ribna. And that's where his home is. Samuel's. And told him all that Saul had done to him. I bet he did. And he, he and Samuel went and dwelt in Naoth. Why did they leave? Because Saul knows where Samuel lives. And Saul would probably get the inkling that's where David would go. So Samuel says, hey, grab your sword, grab your gun, let's let's fight our way. No, Samuel's like, let's go. Goodbye. Get out of here. We'll, we'll leave. And Jesus said one time, not to quote the verse completely, he said, listen, if they persecute you here, flee to another city. And it was told Saul, by who? I don't know. <laughs> Saying, behold, David is at Naoth in Rimna. Well, Nina is in Rimna. But probably a way that, that Saul did not know where he would be, but someone told. It's always someone's going to tell on you. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of prophets prophesying, so they're on their way to David, and here's a group of men, and they're prophesying. And Samuel standing as appointed over them, there's Samuel, under these prophets. The Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. Saul's are coming, Saul's are coming, David's, David's got to run, Saul's are coming, David's on the run. Here comes the messengers, what you guys doing? We're just telling the Saul's are coming, and you... David's got to run. And then he starts saying, Saul's going to come. He's going to get David on the run. Saul's on the run. <laughs> Doing some kind of prophecy is what's going to happen. And it's not recorded what they said. And when it was told Saul, who keeps telling him all these things? That evil spirit? The bird of the air shall tell of the matter? Ecclesiastes? He sent other messengers. And they prophesied likewise. Now you got a whole big group of people. All sitting around prophesying. And Saul sent messengers again the third time. And they prophesied also. Now what's the interesting fact about this? There was a king that sent men to Elijah. If I be the man of God, let fire come down. <laughs> You're gone. He sent another one. If fire come down from heaven, let, you know, I mean, if I be the man of God, let fire come down. <laughs> They're dead. He sent the third group. If I be the man of God, let... <laughs> man, this thing, things that happen all... The history seems to repeat itself over and over, and nobody learns. That king that sent people to Elijah the second time, uh, somewhere in the Bible I read this. Better not send the third one. Third time, and they prophesied, they pro prophesied also. Then went he also to Rimna. <laughs> now he's got to go do it. i got to do the job myself. And came to a great well that's in Sekou. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, 
they be at Naboth's risen. So there's always someone who's going to tell on you. And it, Saul is not asking for good. He wants them dead, and there's always somebody who's going to tell you, hey, they're over there. And he went thither to Naoth in Ramah, and the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, was upon him, not in him, also. And he went on and prophesied. Now he's prophesying. The Holy Spirit has come upon Saul for one purpose. To protect David. Saul has come so close to David that God through his Holy Spirit had to intervene. In him. We have to distract Saul. If we don't distract Saul, I'm talking about the Trinity, he's dead. David. And went on and prophesied until he came to Naam of Rimla. So he's walking and prophesying. He's done this before. When he was first called as a king under the right spirit. And he stripped off his clothes also. So he's walking, stripping, and prophesying. And prophesied before Samuel in like manner as he's been going along. And laid down naked all that day and all that night, like uh, Noah, when he got out of that ark. And wherefore they say, is Saul also among the prophets? Chapter 10, verse 12. Chapter 10, verse 12. We got one more verse after. Check out in the, the chapter 10, verse 12. Chapter 10, verse 12. We've got two points this is being said. In 10, 12. The one of the same place answer said, But who is their father? Therefore it became a prob proverb. Is Saul also among the prophets? Now here he's in the right spirit. There is no evil spirit. There is the spirit of God. This is Saul prophesying of good. And the Bible never records what they prophesy, what they say. Not everything that is said in the Bible is recorded. So when you go over to, to the gospel and says, and Jeremiah said, and oh, Jeremiah never said that because it wasn't written down. And when you come back over here to chapter 20, it says, wherefore is, is Saul among the prophets? He's got the Holy Spirit, but he is against God. God's against him. And it's to protect David. Proverbs 21.1. And God is behind this. And you got to realize, if you've got a wicked ruler over your nation that you don't like, I don't think a lot of people would like Saul. Proverbs 21 1. And this fits Saul perfectly. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he, God, churneth whithersoever he will. And that's also for Daniel 5 17 through 31. Every way of man is right in his own eyes. Saul thinks he's doing right. But the Lord pondereth the hearts. What is the Lord doing here? With his Holy Spirit upon this wicked. David needs to be protected. And you don't realize that there are people when you want to do right. And you're doing what the Bible tells you. You're trying to live like Christ wants us to live. You don't realize that there are enemies out there trying to get you. There are people telling on you. And you may have something weird come up. In your vicinity. And we don't even know what David knows. And it may be what is going on here. And that may be God protecting you. There's many ways God protects us we don't know about. 
with me with lack of patience. How many times has God given me a red light that maybe, you know what? If I didn't stop, it would have been an accident. Saul has stopped. He's been walking and prophesying. He comes down. He, he, he's naked. He, he's down on the ground sitting there. Meanwhile, he's going to give David a chance to go. 